What do you guys know about Moray? <laughs> Moray. Uh, is he? Excellent. And when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, is that a Moray? That's not the kind of Moray we're going to talk about. And neither is this. I was looking at this yesterday, and can you imagine having nostrils like that? What is Moray then? If you look it up in the dictionary, you see a picture of Don Cherry, right? Here's an example of really nasty moray. So this is something that was scanned on a scanner. The dress itself, the top, had vertical lines, but these zigzag lines, what could possibly have caused that? And if you've ever seen it on television, it actually moves as you're moving around. Okay, so what causes moray, do you think? Bad camera. Well, not necessarily. Think of your camera as a grid. So you got a bunch of pixels, you got your sensor, you have a bunch of vertical columns, a bunch of horizontal rows, and it's a grid pattern. But what happens if what you're photographing is close to the same size as that grid? Like say, for example, you were photographing um, someone with a shirt that has vertical red stripes in it. And here's a red stripe, here's a red stripe, here's a red stripe, here's a red stripe. And look at this, we got a grid pattern in here. Imagine this is your sensor. So each of these is one of the pixels on your sensor. So this column of pixels here is gonna see 50% white fabric, 50% red fabric. This row of pixels is gonna see 100% red. This row sees 75% white, 25% red, back to 100% red, back to 25% red, 75% white, and you end up with something like this, which looks nothing like the original pattern. And that's what's happening. So if you're photographing um, a, a cottage for, you know, Cottage Life magazine, and they have a screen door on the front, and that mesh of the screen door comes out fairly close to the size of the mesh on your sensor, you can get those patterns happening. Have you ever been in a, a living room where they have those white sheer curtains, and as the wind blows them, you see those kind of wood grain patterns appearing in the curtains? That's because the curtain behind has the exact same mesh size, and they start interfering with each other. So what do we do about Moray? There is a way not to fix it, but there's a way to tone it down. Uh, your best bet is to avoid it in the first place. Um, and actually, well, there's a Hasselblad camera that came out, and with its resolution, they claimed that it was moray-free, and the photographer I worked with shot a line of sportswear with it, you know, spandexy type stuff, which of course has a very fine weave, and there was some of the worst moray I've ever seen in that. They ended up having to hire me to come in and try to remove a whole lot of it, which cost them a whole lot of money, how could they have avoided that in the first place? Well, then you got a bunch of naked models and the clothing manufacturer's like, this isn't gonna sell my clothes. What if you could change the size of your sensor relative to the image? What if you zoomed out a little bit? Suddenly it's projecting the image smaller on your sensor. Maybe you can tone it out that way. Um, another thing could be um, if the vertical of the vertical lines in the image and the vertical of the vertical lines in your sensor are lining up, what if you tilted your camera a little bit? Project that image slightly diagonally onto your sensor. Better to have to do a slight rotation than have to try to get rid of moray in Photoshop. Because any way you look at it, taking out moray in Photoshop, and I say taking out, but I mean uh, minimizing, is gonna be a destructive process. You're gonna lose some detail in there. So your best bet is to try to avoid it in the first place. Now, that being said, how do you know if you have moray on an image? If your straight lines ain't so straight. So sometimes it's really obvious. Like uh, in this example here, okay, yeah, there's some zigzag lines, and you know that was only vertical, so there's clearly a problem there. What about this image? Here, does this image have moray? What do you think? Does it really? Watch this. There it is, zoomed in a bit. Oh, well, okay, we've got a little bit of a, like, this is the fabric weave, uh, a little bit of, obviously the, it doesn't bend up that way, so that's some moray happening there, but we see a whole lot more moray happening here. But it's the same image. Why might that be? Yeah, it's a low res, so this image is actually 1440 by 2160 pixels. This preview, though, is quite a bit smaller. The pattern in this fabric, once it gets scaled down, it's not interfering with the grid of pixels in the image, it's interfering with the grid of pixels on the screen. And if I open this image in Photoshop, we can see we've got a little bit of kind of weird bending up happening here. Let's open this in Photoshop. There's that weird bending up. If we zoom in a bit, oh, it wasn't there at all either. So the first thing is to figure out if you do in fact have moray. 
And as we saw, if you're looking at it on a lower resolution screen, the interference patterns can be caused by the screen itself, not the file. So if you're doing a shoot and you look on the back of your camera and you see moray all over the fabric, what should you do first? Zoom in. Zoom in. Ideally, one to one. At a one to one ratio, you can see every pixel in the image. And if the moray is not there, then you don't actually have it, so don't worry about it. If you see it while you're zoomed in, uh, like, let's say, for example, on this image here, at this resolution, we see you know, kind of a little bit of a U-shape in here, some kind of stuff bending in on the sides. If we zoom in a bit, though, oh, wait a minute, it's changed. Now we have this kind of swooping pattern around here. If we go into closer than one to one, ah, we can see that this image does, in fact, have moray in it. So that's when it's time to act. So either zoom out, change the relative size of the grid pattern in the image against the grid pattern on your sensor, tilt your camera maybe, better to have to do a bit of a rotation than to try to fix stuff like this in Photoshop. Pop into the folder called Moray, and first off, you're gonna make some of your own Moray, just for fun. There's a file in there called moray3.psd, and again, I didn't mean for that to rhyme either, it just came out that way. But you'll notice that there's two layers. This is actually two sets of vertical lines that are perfectly aligned with each other. So imagine, you know, one is the fabric and the other is your sensor. Take one of those layers, just pop into free transform, maybe command T, and scale one relative to the other. Or give it a slight rotation. And you can see that moray starting to appear. So two patterns that are exactly the same are somehow combining, once they're slightly offset, to create completely new patterns. If you scale it sideways, you start getting this kind of piano key sort of effect happening. If you give it a slight rotation, Pretty weird, eh? And, and a little bit fun, I guess you have to admit. So is this a new thing to digital photography? We've got pixels on our sensors, basically a grid of squares. Some subjects have grids of squares. Is this, this never, we never popped up this problem before? How many people have ever seen a color photograph reproduced in, say, a magazine or something? Well, come on, every hand has to go up. Um, if you look real close at a magazine, this is something I did for um, Wedding Bells many, many years ago. And if you zoom in real close, you can see it's a photograph, okay. But if you go in even closer, remember we talked about CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If you were to look really close at a magazine, you're gonna see the individual dots of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks that make up the image. And they were coming up with some problems. If you're doing a black and white photograph, it's pretty straightforward. You just throw on some dots, and if you've ever looked really closely at a black and white image in a newspaper, you know that there's no gray in there. Wherever you see lighter tones, it's just smaller dots of ink. The press can only put down ink or not put down ink. It can't put down shades of gray. So they came up with this process called half toning, where they break the image down into dots, which is cool. But as we saw, if there's a slight offset, some pretty bad things can happen. This isn't something you want happening on your images. So when they started doing offset press work where they were doing four colors at a time, in this case, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, they had to come up with a way of minimizing those moray patterns. So they came up with the idea of using different angles. So say the black has a, an angle like this, the cyan will have an angle like this, the magenta, and the yellow. Everything has its own rotational angle. And you do end up with what are called rosettes. You can see these kind of distinctive sort of circular patterns appearing. With those angles, they make those as small as they possibly can, but they are still noticeable. In fact, if you go back to the original image here, this is a scan of an actual magazine. You can see those rosettes happening in there. So that's one of the limiting factors when you're going to a magazine. If you spend a whole lot of work working on you know, every single little tiny eyelash, you can see the eyelashes in Photoshop, but once this goes to the magazine, a lot of that gets half-toned out. I've had clients where you, know, you sit down beside the client, you're doing some retouching, and they're, they've got me right in there you know, doing the individual tips of each eyelash. I'm like, y you know, once this goes to press, that's gonna get half-toned right out, but they still insist. So this isn't a new thing. So the screen angles that they came up with was the idea of rotating them slightly to avoid stuff like this. You ready? Whee! And they had a lot of things in the, um, 
in the 60s, they had like uh, lampshades where um, with the, the heat of the bulb would rotate a little fan and the outer lampshade would rotate next to the inner lampshade and you would get those kind of moray effects happening. So moray can be fun unless it's in your photographs.